How's it going guys? Andy here and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about the plant that got me into this hobby over 30 years ago. So this, as many of you will know, is the money plant or the money tree or the jade plant or the lucky plant. <laughs> it goes by many, many names, but officially this is Crassula ovata. So I think I was around 10 years old when my grandmother gave me a cutting of her money plant, just like this one and I was fascinated with watching it grow. They're super easy to care for. You can forget about them for a while and they're still gonna be okay. So it was the perfect plant to uh, get me started at the tender age of probably around about 10. And I really enjoyed watching it grow. In the summer, they grow very fast, especially when they're young. And it really sparked my interest in houseplants and horticulture in general. And I think since then, I've probably always had at least one houseplant in my home. So coming up, I've got a bit of a care guide for you, light, water requirements, that sort of thing. Plus the one thing you really need to avoid doing with this plant in order not to kill it. They're super easy to care for, but there's one thing they really don't like. And I'm gonna explain all about that in just a minute. So a little bit about these plants. Crassula is a type of species that is native to South Africa. And I've grown quite a few different Crassula over the years and still do have a few right now. Crassula perforata is a really interesting variant. I'll leave a link to my review of that one. I love growing that and have done for many years. Crassula sermentosa calico kitten, I think is the name of it. That's a really interesting plant. I love growing that one. It goes a deep, rich red in direct sun in the summer and looks stunning. And it's really handy to create projects with because it hangs down beautifully. And uh, there's just something about it I love growing. So um, I'll probably have to do a review of that one at some point in the future. Crassula arborescens, subspecies undulatifolia, I think it's called, is another beautiful plant. It's got these amazing curled leaves and looks great as a big bushy plant. I've really enjoyed keeping that over the last few years and super easy to care for, as are all Crassulas really, because they are native to South Africa, as I've already said, they're naturally used to being in a very harsh, hot environment with direct sun and baking heat. So they generally store water in their leaves and trunk and therefore will be quite drought tolerant. You can forget about them for a little while and they'll be fine. And they have these big fleshy leaves and thick skin. So they are uh, quite a tolerant houseplant. But there's one thing that they just can't handle. As with many succulents, they don't like to be kept too wet. They need to dry out in between waterings. And also in the winter, you've got to be super careful because if you water this plant too much in the winter, if it gets a little bit cold, it will start to rot, especially if you get too much water in down by the base of the trunk, because if the rot starts to get into the base of the trunk, the whole plant is lost and it doesn't matter what you do after that. If the trunk is rotten, then eventually the plant will die. The only thing you can do is potentially take cuttings from further up branches and then regrow them. But uh, you have really got to be careful of too much water, specifically around the base of the trunk and especially during the winter. In the summer, if it's generally warmer, it's going to dry out relatively quickly. And so the water won't sit there for too long. You can get away with it without a problem. But in the winter, it sits there. It, there's more chance of getting potentially cold depending on where you live so you have to be careful so there's a few things you can do to avoid this firstly uh, try to water it away from the the base of the trunk around the sides a little bit and obviously in the winter you need to wait until it dries out bet between watering so it doesn't stay damp over the winter it won't like that the other thing you can do is actually put some gravel in the base of the pot and that way it acts like a barrier between the plant 
and the damp soil. And so the water goes through into the soil. It acts like a barrier to stop the water sitting around the base of the plant. There will be a bit of a protective barrier. Also, if there are any leaves that are coming down, drooping down towards the soil, then that will also create a barrier between the soil and the low hanging leaves. Again, stopping them getting wet, stopping them getting damp as well. So it looks nice and also serves a handy purpose. So those are two things you can think about doing put some gravel in the top, which looks nice, and just generally being careful with your watering in the winter and keep away from right down in the middle by the base of the plant. Direct your water a little bit further out and you should be fine. They are pretty hardy plants, but like all succulents in the winter, you really have to slacken off that watering. Don't give them too much because they can't use it. They go semi-dormant anyway. They're not actively growing and they can't really use that water. So better water less than more in the winter. Let them dry out. And if they're getting bone dry, give them a little bit to stop them going completely dry in the winter. But all you're doing is uh, just really managing that soil rather than giving them much water to grow because unless you live in a country that is hot all year round, then they are gonna go dormant and they're not gonna grow that much anyway. If you live in a hot uh, tropical country, then they're actively growing all year round and you don't have that as a problem. The thing I love about these plants is they can be extremely long lived because they are so tolerant. People will own these for generations, especially in the Chinese community. They're often seen as a source of good luck and prosperity. So they're quite often grown and a family member will keep that the entire life and even it will be handed down to daughters and sons and kept again in generations. And it's not unusual to find some um, money trees that are 50, 60 years old, over 100 years old as well. So they are an interesting plant. And so if you've bought one of these plants recently or been given one by a friend, if you look after it, you could have a lifelong companion in the humble money tree. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you again soon.